Central School spelling in 10th standard. Today, I am going to ask my uncle, Mr. K. R. Vijay, a few questions about his career. First, let me introduce him to you all. He was a food scientist who worked for DRDO lab. Under that, he worked for DFRL, that is Defense Food Research Laboratories that works in the area of food science and technology and caters the special needs of the armed forces. He retired recently in 2016. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. Uh, so sir, can you tell what you do in your work? To tell you all my experiences as a scientist in my career. I was working in one of the defense labs that was doing R&D work for the armed forces. Now what is so special about food for the armed forces, you may be thinking. It's as simple as this. Now you just imagine in your own house, you have three, four people at home and each one has a different taste, different liking and different dishes to be made. So this same experience, you extend it to the whole country. Our armed forces are made of people from north, south, east and west, each having their own culinary tastes. Their food habits are different. Some like it spicy, some like it in a different taste, some like it very bland. So when somebody is trying to prepare food for such a varied taste panel, it is very difficult to make one food product that satisfies everyone. So this is the foremost challenge. What are the difficulties faced by the food scientists working in the armed forces? What is the weight they have to carry? Each soldier has to carry literally 40 to 50 kgs on his back including his ammunition, guns and these food products. One has to bear in mind that these food products need not be very bulky in order to save space, save volume on their backs. But at the same time, they should provide good, nutritious, wholesome, calorie-free diets that are required for them during their arduous task, very difficult task in the whole day. These are the difficulties that a scientist working in the areas of food products development for the armed forces faces. Now technologies have been developed to produce these foods for the armed forces in the lab and we as a team work on all these areas to provide the best possible almost close to fresh food to the soldiers who totally depend on processed foods when they are on patrolling. So how was the food served in such a difficult condition? Work on in order to provide wholesome food. Now the food has to be wholesome, it should be nutritious and it should also provide the required calories depending on the climatic conditions wherever they are serving. If you take the high altitudes, they serve at minus 30 to minus 40 degrees where even the raw egg that is supplied turns into a stone. So cooking itself takes a long time. Serving it in that condition before it is consumed takes a lot of experience for the soldiers. In order to help them survive in such conditions, raw food materials that are sent like vegetables and other raw materials which have to be cooked in field conditions have to be stored in the raw conditions itself as they are exposed to sub-zero temperatures, freezing temperatures. So specially designed silos also have been designed so that they can preserve these foods without spoilage for a longer duration. Foods are so prepared so that the soldier does not need to have a big setup of cooking utensils, stoves or firewood or whatever is required to prepare fresh foods. First thing is that they don't have the time. They are not supposed to waste a lot of time doing all these things. So we have developed in our organization foods which are called ready to eat. They are pre-cooked and packed in HDPE and LDPE plastics which withstand high temperature, which are which have the strength of shearing strength, puncture strength and they are also suitable in for printing anything on them. So how much time can this food be preserved? You can preserve these foods like chapatis or chicken curry or mutton curry or mutton palao or chicken palao whatever you name it from 6 to 1 year without spoilage. Chapatis and parotas are staple diets for the Indian Armed Forces. Literally everybody consumes it and these are of high demand. The delivery systems, as I said, the packing required for these kind of foods that are to be delivered to the soldiers is of utmost importance. 
sea soldiers are working in the field areas where transport is literally not available so most of what happens is pack food or raw foods are dropped air dropped to wherever they are serving so once this is decided processed foods which are air dropped do receive a certain amount of shock when it impacts the ground when they are dropped from the air and this is the shock that the packing material has to withstand so that the packing does not get damaged and they don't rupture spoiling the foods so this is one big area where a lot of work has been done high density polyethylenes low density polyethylenes have been used with two layers three layer or four layer packing materials which withstand the shock when they are air dropped in the same area what are the latest developments in the same area that you may be curious to know that is being made and that is what everybody is curious to know about when i joined services i was just exposed to the new foods that were developed for rakesh sharma squadron leader rakesh sharma who was the first indian astronaut to travel to space from russia then they had supplied food bars fruit bars and chocolates which were made in our lab of recent now the latest work that is going on is the food products that are being specially developed are for the indian astronauts who are likely to go on the chandrayaan moon mission lot of our technologies have been transferred to the civilian sectors to name one or two i can say mtr then cadbury's who have acquired our technologies and they are marketing it to earn revenue so the transfer of technology also earn, earns lot of revenue back to the government what are the new ways of improving the system new materials and new ways of doing things that are coming up are edible spoons and plates which can be consumed along with your food after eating everything you can just chew up the spoon or the plate that is also a part of the packing systems in the field conditions you will find that throwing away a can or a plastic or whatever which is not of use once made or made use of can lead the enemy to wherever you are as they can follow you based on the wastage that you have thrown so in order to avoid this the first thing that was done was to make the compo packs light by discarding aluminum so now it is all tetra packs or hdp or ldp packings and of recent Uh, the latest thing to come in is the inclusion of nano particles into the packing material so these are totally biodegradable once you have used the carton and you just throw it out into the sunlight within 2 days or 3 days the whole packing carton crumbles to dust once it is exposed to sunlight it's enough your packing material is totally destroyed so this is one latest development as you all know there is a saying that the army marches on its stomach the soldier has to be fed well he should have enough energy to have strength to march or just walk and travel long distances so sufficient food required with the reception calorie supplies designing such foods is what is of utmost importance so the army which marches on its stomach primarily depends on food so my work along with my colleagues has been of this kind which also has civilian applications a lot of food is being wasted without value additions so once this kind of work which can add value to foods that are being wasted millions and millions can be served hunger can be eradicated easily